We would be honored if you would join us. Before I start, if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. This is the way. Hey folks, welcome to first room tour in a good couple of years. Um, really, really excited to finally be able to share a room tour once again. Um, for those who have been following over the last six plus months, I've sort of been doing a little bit of a series, putting together my room um, to get to the point where it is now, which I'm really happy with. I'm, I'm really content. Um, there's still more stuff I want to do. It's That's one thing about a collector's room, it's always an evolution. Um, but yeah, since my last room tour, which I reckon was early 20, mid tw early 2021, um, there's been some big changes in life. And um, yeah, I'm at a point now really happy and, and I'm excited to share my collection. So, um, you know, it is something that it's always changing. So it's something I hope to do more consistently. Um, I've always tried to do one a year, um, but maybe, maybe every six months or something if there's any major changes. But I do plan on continuing like my video logs, um, my little video log series um, updates to my room and stuff like that. So just as I go along. So um, yeah, I'm going to be filming this in parts over the next few days. I hope, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I, I'm going to take my time with this video, so um, if it ends up being a long one, kick back, grab a drink, enjoy yourself, and uh, I'd love to see you in the comments below. Let me know what you think, and uh, yeah, enjoy. Let's go. All right, so just to begin, we're just going to take a little look around the room, just get a little bit of a pan around, check it all out. We'll probably come and start, I don't know, at the doorway, I think, is probably a good place to start, and we'll make our way around and get back to around, back around here. So, like I said, I hope you enjoy taking a good close look around my room here. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's at a weird point where... You know, I don't have any artwork to hang. I've got artwork to hang. I'm just not able to hang it. Um, so I've been able to just put a few random figures up on the wall. There's no sort of rhyme or reason. It was more so just, you know, get them out of a box and put them on the wall. Um, but yeah, the sort of the plan is eventually get some more hooks and get some of my artwork sort of up along the wall there. Um, and yeah, I did have some artwork up on this wall, but it's almost like a, uh, a slightly textured, textured wall, textured concrete wall. So unfortunately, nothing really stuck to it for a very long time. So <laughs> it is what it is. Um, yeah, I did have the Obi-Wan up there with Mole, but had a fall. <laughs> so yeah, these are all just sort of temporary placements for these figures at the moment. The bigs there from Star Wars Celebration. Same with the Obi-Wan and the Maul up there. Just a couple of other random figures. Some Boba Fett stuff on the wall there. And I've sort of shared this framed picture for a lot of keepsakes that I've collected over the years. I do need to sort of lift that up a little bit higher. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll start here with the Clone Wars. So I've got my ATTE and sort of basically my live action Clone Wars figures. I have what one Mandalorian that has taken a fall there. But yeah, these are just sort of live action sort of style figures. Art Troopers and looking forward to that new TBC Rex that's going to come out this year. That's going to be awesome. So we're getting down to the sort of animated style. I did have a Sokra Maul in the back there in front of the Mandalorian throne, but um, yeah, they just weren't standing out enough, so I thought well, they can go up the top. So this is sort of a Jedi Heroes, clones, etc. Down here, got like bounty hunters, some villains, got Jabba at the back there. 
love to get some little little strip lights for this this shelf here I think I do have a little set of lights that I may end up using here so so we got sort of villains we've got a couple of figures that have fallen down that's all right that always it's always going to happen and then I've got my sort of Tartakovsky sort of related Clone Wars shelf Republic attack shuttle minus wings. I'd need to get the wings for that So I'm pretty pr proud of how this collections going there's a few I'm missing would love to get a more of the real sort of cartoon animated figures like like them I'd Love to add some more of those but yeah, it's important to me to have a good section to the Clone Wars. Uh, this here is probably the biggest star, the second biggest Star Wars fan in the room. <laughs> so I'm going to shuffle that to the other side. And now we can take a look at Black Series. Now we sort of go chronologically here. Yeah, sort of Phantom Menace up in the top corner. You know, limited releases there. We've got Anakin and Padme coming up this year, which is cool. That sort of bleeds into Attack of the Clones. It's been, it might be nice to some fine additions to go in there this year as well. We've got the sort of Tartakovsky Clone Wars Obi Wan and Mace. And that sort of intermingles with the Clone Wars that we come to know over the last sort of 15 plus years. Or well, since 2008. Let's get some clones, some Mandalorians. Ahsoka and Maul. Got the Tartakovsky Grievous there. And that sort of starts to bleed into Revenge of the Sith. So I like being able to display both sides of Anakin slash Vader. Got the Delta Squad up the back. My favourite Plo Koon up the front. And then that slowly bleeds into the Bad Batch. Includes Captain Rex, sort of series one looks to all the characters, plus Clone Wars, obviously, they had their first appearance. Sort of Imperial Crosshair, and Cad Bane up the back, and then the season two versions. And we're only a couple of weeks away from season three at the point of recording, so that's going to be exciting. We sort of come down here, we get into sort of my quote unquote sort of dark times. So we've got some Jedi Fallen Order, different versions of Cal Kestis, some of the troopers and, and stuff from that game. And that goes into Solo, a Star Wars story. Definitely a cool, cool film. I love. Love Solo. Memphis Nest up the back. And given that that sort of happens at a similar time to Obi-Wan Kenobi, naturally that's the next next sort of section here. You know, I'm missing uh, One Jack and the Purge. Purge Trooper from Kenobi. I think they're the only two I'm missing. But I will track them down at some point. Yeah, love that Vader. And that sort of crosses. This is my, my homeboy. R5-D4. <laughs> now you sort of get into Rebels territory. Where I picked up another Inquisitor. Thought it was too cool to have. You know, I had another one. So I thought I'd put him on display. That's a custom Kanan from Malachor. Malachor 5? Completely mental blank. 
and we have the heroes Ahsoka fighting Maul and then Ezra from season 2 which was recently released we sort of get into Andor amazing series then naturally sort of goes into Rogue One and uh you know, a, a K2SO that rarely stands up. Just doesn't behave himself, that one. So I'm definitely hoping we get to see an updated director Krennic, given that all the other main characters have been updated. Along with, you know, Saw Gerrera. Some great figures there. Love Rogue One. And then we go down to A New Hope. Got the Cantina Band, obviously, at the front. Still need to get one more member to make up the seven, but I'm pretty happy with six. I know there's another, there's another clue horn player, which is the same as that one right there in the front. But yeah, six is good. If I find another one cheap, I'll, I'll pick one up and add him in, but I'm not too fussy. I'm happy with that. I think I think they look fantastic. Some Tuscan Raiders, some Sand Troopers, the Dewback. We get a couple of a couple of stormtroopers have toppled over there <laughs> and and pilot Luke. You know, these three heroes definitely need an upgrade. That's a that looks a custom. Leia, Leia's sort of okay. Han definitely needs an upgrade. We go to Empire Strikes Back. And again, that Luke. It's a bit of a custom. Did a bit of a head swap. Sort of getting into the, the Cloud City, Bespin sort of side of the film. We've got the bounty hunters up the top. Some dagger for training happening there. And then a custom Luke. Then we come back down, Return of the Jedi. I'm very excited. I should very, very soon, the next couple of weeks, have a have a proper throne for Jabba, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Some great, great figures in the Return of the Jedi. It's seen a lot of love over the last few years. Some almost little vignettes, so sort of scenes I've got set up here. Luke with Anakin. Luke and Vader in front of the Emperor. The Four Spirits. So I feel like there's a lot more they could do with Return of the Jedi, but, you know, they've been focusing on the main characters, and I think they've done pretty damn good in that aspect of things. So we get into sort of the Mandoverse, I guess. It starts with sort of Season one of Mandalorian. A couple of versions of Din Djarin. Sort of jotted through the middle. So we've got Muddy Mando. We've got early season one Mando after he gets his new pauldron. That's a bit of a custom. We've got that sort of First episode tracking Mando. We've got the Maldo Crease, sort of snowy Mando. <laughs> the late, great Carl Weathers, rest in peace. We start getting into some sort of Book of Boba Fett and Mando season two and three, all sort of mixed in here. The Cobb Vanth and Boba and the Tuscans and Cad Bane and Bo Katan. Looking forward to the new Mandalorian, the Red Glavis Ring World one. I do have one on its way, so that will be 
jumping in somewhere here at some point in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. And you sort of get into Ahsoka down the end here. A little bit of a custom job on the Marrick. And I did the leg swap for Balin and Shin. There's Morgan Elspeth and a couple of HKs. I forgot to point out the uh, my knock up there. <laughs> now you sort of get down to, you know, The Force Awakens. The sequel trilogy down below. Some great figures in here that could do with some updates. Obviously Han Solo got a nice update about a year ago in the archive. He looks fantastic. I'd love to see an update for Leia. The Ray has a bit of a bit of a custom. I used some parts off spare island journeys to, to create to create that ray. And this one here. An updated Luke would be fantastic. Updated Kylo Ren. Even just photo real paint apps would be great. This is the first order troops. Just got a few. <laughs> They're coming into the last Jedi with Finn there versus Phasma. Some of the heroes of the the new rebellion. Snoke and just a few more troopers. This is sort of where I snuck in a couple of SHF figures. So I've got the Jedi Exile Luke. And the crate look at the back there. Ray there. And yeah, Rise of Skywalker, severely underserved in terms of character selection. I I went a little bit nuts with the uh, Sith Troopers. <laughs> sort of a custom, custom Palpatine there as well. We'd love to see the rest of the Knights of Ren. I mean, Poe, Finn... Lando would be a great start. You know, I think they, they started making some good headway with Rise of Skywalker figures. You know, there's some great ones. Dark Side Ray, Ray, obviously. Janna's even a good figure, whether you like the character or not, that's besides the point. Sorry, Bliss was a great character. The, the Sith Troopers were awesome. Um, but yeah, love the would love the Knights of Ren. And just Finn and Poe from that film, honestly, that'd be that'd be awesome. So we even got a little Babu Frick down there and Dio, BB-8. So yeah, there's, there's the Black Series, guys. So yeah, I'm just going to stop there and we'll move on to the next section. So yeah, just around the corner from that is more Black Series. This is sort of gaming greats and, and comic figures and stuff like that. So we've got some like New Jedi Order era. Hondo from Galaxy's Edge, some gaming great sort of troops and comic figures and you know, Dr. Afro and Luke and those two which I've picked up recently and then the Sith Lords which are just awesome and then here I've got my Snoke, Snoke's throne room jewel with Rey and the Praetorian Guards and Kylo there. I chopped up Snoke, which was fun to do. A member of my channel, Darth Muzzer, he sent me a Snoke a couple years back and I proceeded to just chop him to part pieces. <laughs> but yeah, above that I've got sort of a bit of a Darth Vader shrine going on here. All sorts of bits and pieces in there. His helmet and a cookie jar and one of the Unleashed figures up there. Going below that, we've got a bit of a Boba Fett sort of shrine going on here. A couple of customs there. Boba Fett that I did. And then one at the back there, the Return of the Jedi custom there. That's from a good friend, Fallen Jedi. He gave that to me back in 2017 at Star Wars Celebration in Orlando.
So that's some cool random little bits and pieces. I don't go hardcore for Boba Fett, but I like picking up the odd piece in here and there. Now I've got the Star Wars fact files down the bottom. Which, uh, yeah, I'd never do them again. And yeah, sort of personal folders with collections and keepsakes and trading cards and obviously photos and autographs and all sorts of bits and pieces in there. And just down in the corner here, this is sort of always a bit of storage, some artwork, um, box of comics and just random bits and pieces and stuff there. So nothing too exciting there. And sort of just going along the top, we've got some sort of Black Series helmets. I uh, definitely would like to get the Captain Rex that's going to come out this year. My plan is boost this up, get another lot of shelves on top, go get another layer, and then put the put the helmets up on the top there. So yeah, just a sort of a random assortment of things. I love that plush mole. sort of popcorn cups and buckets and drink cups and all sorts of random stuff there some mugs and some yeah just random stuff I sort of got rid of most of the sort of the 12 inch shampoo bottle figures but I decided to keep the three Kylo Rens there I did a bit of a clean out when I uh, set up this room and yeah decided to uh, part ways with a few things But yeah, sort of getting into sort of home media and stuff, but we've got a shelf here of concept figures. Which I still need to get General Grievous, IG-88. Uh, there's a Kiati Mundi. There might be one I'm forgetting about. But yeah, in, sort of in between all these shelves, I, I like to sort of hang little mementos I've got. You know, so celebration lanyards and and pins and and stuff that I've collected. I love sort of showing those off. So I've got a few of them. We'll sort of skim past them as I go. It's a three D printed bust that I did a couple of years back. I'd need to finish painting that up. But yeah, so the DVDs and Blu rays and steel books and. Stuff like that, and that's my 3D printed Cal Kestis lightsaber from Fallen Order. Sort of video games. Not a huge collection there, but just ones I've sort of picked up and kept over the years. It's more sort of DVDs, documentaries, parodies like Family Guys and the Robot Chickens and the Lego stuff. And there in the corner, I've got my. These specialized editions. You know, a few sets of the VHSs down below that. There's George and Dave. A couple of Super 8s. Well, a few Super 8 films there. Do need to get the uh, John Favreau Paz Vizsla figure to go there, but yeah, just haven't bit the bullet on that one yet. CD collection. I think. <laughs> I don't think we'll see any more CDs anymore, so that's pretty much a done collection. Uh, just a few random Lego sets and stuff that I've that I've kept over the years. Sort of getting some books. There's a piece of art there that I need to get framed up. That's just staying in there because it's, I know it's a nice flat spot. Yeah, sort of getting into books. So this sort of reference. reference guides and stuff like that and then underneath that I've got sort of art books most of these are sort of you know art related those making of books are incredible the storyboard books there by Rinsler are fantastic as well Yeah, moving up to the top, sort of uh, 
yeah, getting into sort of more more novels, sort of High Republic, Thrawn related books there. Don't need to stop and explain these too much. And for those wondering, no, I haven't read them all <laughs> and probably never will, but I do try my best. And below that, I've got a sort of a little bit of a Disney Galaxy's Edge sort of shelf, even though I haven't visited yet, I will. And I will add some more souvenirs to this this shelf. So this is sort of little things I've picked up from, from Disney World over the years, over the last couple of trips that I've been there, 2017 and 2019, and just a few little few little keepsakes of things that I've uh, brought back and enjoyed. So below that, got some more books. I am sort of tucked behind the couch here, so it's a little bit trickier to show what's going on down here. I will do my best, but this is a little bit darker. down below that some Lego Lego sort of books sort of random books and bits and pieces some annuals the thousand collectibles book is amazing so yeah that's probably the trickiest little bit to get to in the room now we'll move up the Star Wars archives. That was a nice new addition from my girlfriend for Christmas. Beautiful, beautiful books. Haven't really had the time to sit down and take a look at that one yet, but I will. I love that Ventress. Hey, it's me. <laughs> Let me start getting a few of the, a few of the legends, expanded universe novels. I did try my hardest to sort of stick with ones without the Legends banner once they sort of got rebranded like that one. But yeah, I have added a couple just, you know, I found them and I wanted to add them to the collection. So I have. And yeah, like most of these shelves, I like just dotting random collectibles about. It just gives it a little bit more something to look at when I'm looking around the room and when I have guests over to come and take a look. Like, yeah, I have an autograph of uh, Old Darker. <laughs> and that card was a uh, was a gift from from my master at Kessel Run. He, uh, at the Kessel Run. He gave that to me years before I started, actually. So I've had that in the collection for a long time. And it's a card I got graded just for the sake of getting something graded a few years ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, my little Four Sunley Shrine. Hoping to, would love to add some more characters to that at some point. Even if it's a, you know, Force Unleashed 2, Gale and Merrick. Yeah, get a few sort of hard covers of some Legends EU. That uh, Kenobi one sort of goes for a little bit of cash these days. As does, uh, Revenge of the Sith, which I think I've got down there. I do. I recently found that was going for quite a lot of money too as a hardcover. Uh, young Readers. Some of these books I've had since I was a very wee lad. Some of them I uh, have picked up only recently, so... Mind me, I'm going to sit down on my chair while I get around these lower shelves. So again, just you know, bits and pieces, odd collectibles. You know, lots of lots of books. I'm um, hoping within the next couple of weeks, when I get back, is to start cataloging all the all of these books. I do have an app on my phone, uh, which allows me to scan. ISBN numbers and, and be able to catalogue everything, so I do need to spend a few hours actually sitting down to do that. Yeah, a couple of just nice little Star Wars Celebration Chicago 
bits with some some patches, German garrison, someone I met. Rebel Force Radio Celebration Bash from 2017. Star Wars Celebration 2019 patch. I didn't never I didn't get the Orlando one. Um, that was from Anaheim 2020, the one that never happened. <laughs> I did buy tickets for that celebration, but obviously that never happened. 20th anniversary. So if anyone's got a uh, got an Orlando 2017 patch, iron-on patch like this, I would love I would love to have one. The Smugglers Run. I've got some. I did pick up some letters to spell Jedi. I have nothing to put them on yet. Anyway, our collector's hut. <laughs> love it. Uh, sort of got some more bookie books down here. I never did get the other two, the other two guides. It was the the rebel, the rebel one, and the smugglers one. I think, yeah, the rebels and the smugglers. Um, yeah, trade paperbacks coming into the sort of the Marvel era. I did start getting into the sort of the post. New Hope era with a few here, but it just got too hard, so I've pretty much stopped there. But we'll pick up a few every now and then. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a little while now, so I'm, I'm very much behind on the uh, comic book front there. But I think I did pretty well up until they sort of went to that sort of post the New Hope era. Some of the omnibuses or omnibuy. <laughs> Down below, Star Wars Insider collection, which I still buy. Um, probably not as religiously as I once did, obviously. But yeah, when I spot them, I'll pick them up. And the rest of these are all, you know, Star Wars related magazines. You know, Empire Covers, Vanity Fair, Sci-Fi Now, SFX, all sorts, Time Magazines. Yeah, I've sort of, again, that's something, you know, physical floppies like that don't come around all that often anymore. So, yeah, I, I still keep my eyes open. Um, but yeah, they're a little bit little bit trickier to track down these days. So now we're starting to get into the fun part. This is the uh, start of my three and three quarter inch collection. We're starting up here with Power of the Force. For those that don't know, I... Uh, do an episode almost every single week, Power of the Force Fridays. And sort of do a bit of a look at an individual action figure or a part of the collection. Do a little bit of a video on them. On them. So there's a couple of pages from my first Star Wars celebration, which was, you know, very heavily focused on the on the release and the trailer of the Last Jedi. A sign there, that's awesome. My own badge, Jedi Master. <laughs> Got the Rancor. That vintage Jabba's throne, that's literally just holding up the Rancor until I get something else to go there. So yeah, by no means is this collection complete. I will get there one day. But it's it's fun just to sort of pick and choose figures every now and then. Now we get down to the Kenner. I did have all these sort of spaced out over over three shelves, but as as space does get tight, I've decided just to really condense them. Um, yeah, I've pretty much got all the regular line, just sort of getting into the last 17, which is, you know, difficult. It'll probably never, never be complete, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy just to have a version of each character. You know, I don't even really care if they're complete without accessories. Slot, as long as they're not broken, I don't mind a little bit of damaged paint. Like, you know, look at Luke's leg and the droids here. They look a little bit ratty. You know, Wicket hasn't got his little, little head thing. But, you know, I'm just happy to have... Yeah, it's a bit of history. I like the fact that they've been played with and... You know, there's, there's history to some of these figures. They're not all sort of minty, fresh, untouched. I like the part of history there. 
it's been fun to sort of gather them up over the years. But again, just onto the last 17, I do have the Luke and Anakin. I'm pretty sure that's it. So we get into Expanded Universe Legends figures. Obviously at the front there, heralded by Revan and Malak. Would love to get a new Malak. I like to have the sort of Sith. There's some of the most coolest figures. A slight custom there of Bane. Maul. And some of the legacy era, era figures there. Sort of try and have them grouped into their eras as much as possible. But eventually it's just about trying to make them all fit. <laughs> so some great, great figures in there. And down here is quite a quite dark times. Um, you know, just couldn't fit them in at this stage with my three and three quarter inch stuff. So they've kind of just got their own little spot over here for now. I'm hoping that, you know, lines like Andor and Obi-Wan end up getting a little bit more fleshed out so they can uh, find some places elsewhere. Now here I've got sort of animated stuff. So I've got Rebels. Uh, I'd love to get them out of this little corner at some point. Um, Resistance. And just under that, sort of my little collection of retros. Which I kept saying I would never add to, but I keep doing it. And then, yeah, there's just sort of a selection of the toy box and Galaxy Adventures, whatever it is, figures down there. So that pretty much takes up that entire side of, of the room. So there's my little couch I like to chill on. Yeah, it gets around here in collectibles. Um, little coffee table, my current issue of Star Wars Insider. <laughs> Some plates, I don't know where to put them. There's my Black Series Snow Speeder. But yeah, here's where the... Uh, Here's my little desk where the magic happens. My magical swivel chair. So yeah, there's a couple of new additions of the uh, Detolf cases, which have recently come in, which have been really nice. Um, was able to get them for absolutely nothing. Someone on Facebook was giving them away. So really, really happy to have a couple of these in. And thanks to my good friend Fallen Jedi for recommending their placement because I did have my desk over there for a little while and uh yeah I'm actually really super stoked with how these look especially lit up once I got those strip lights in there I'm really really happy with these uh, up above them I've got a couple of posters there which are done by Red 5 Designs my Ralph McQuarrie super duper awesome edition a couple of SH figure arts figures there Ray's lightsaber, Leia's lightsaber, which I just dropped a review on. Uh, little bits of stuff. <laughs> Stack of blue tack always comes in handy. Uh, some Death Star walls. Reviews for photos. And yeah, always, always wanting more hot toys. Not always being able to afford them, but you know, Jesse is obviously one to take up pride on the top of the shelf there. He's uh, my favourite clone, for, good, for, for reasons, you know. Well, let's actually, so I don't get as much reflection, let's open these up. And below that we've got Bo-Katan, amazing, amazing figure. Below that I've got the Sideshow Plo Koon. Still holds up, as a really, really great looking figure. And I 3D printed his lightsaber. Below that, I've got my sort of Tamashii Nations, sort of samurai figures. I don't know that I'll add any more to that. Never say never, but I do want the uh, Mandalorian and and Grogu sort of set. That'd look awesome. And back up the top here, we've got obviously Ahsoka, 
would love to have more with her. Down here I've got a couple other. Got the yak face from the barge and then the Anakin as well as an SHF Ray. These will eventually get moved out. I've got the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi Darth Vader coming hopefully very, very soon. Now Sideshow Mace and then Anakin down below. So it's nice to have nice to have nice bright cabinets for these guys. Which I absolutely love these detolf cases. Alright, so now we're starting to get into the three and three quarter inch scale stuff. Um, yeah, up the top here, this is just a good spot for storage of boxes. <laughs> uh, a few other display pieces and stuff like that. So nothing too exciting going up there. Look at that. Bounty Hunter 2 pack. Been part of my collection for a long time. I remember exactly where I got that. My old friend, Arc Trooper Mark, back in the day. He's been absent from YouTube for a long time now, but I won't remember winning a contest probably over 10 years ago now. And there's the 501st boys and Dave and Jar Jar riding an ATAT. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it was fun. And the Slave One. It will always be the Slave One. I just put him up there the other day. I don't know why. The Razor Crest from Haslab. I'm sort of getting around to the start again. Some sort of carded figures here on the side. Just ones that I've really liked over the years. It's been kind of cool. So yeah, I guess with that, we'll start hitting up the uh, three and three quarter. Again, there's probably going to be some figures that have fallen over and stuff in amongst all this, but yeah, just bear with me and we'll just, we'll just take a look through chronologically. I think it's going to be fun. All right, so sliding straight into Phantom Menace here. So like I said, a couple of figures toppled over. It is what it is. Tried to keep them all in with their scenes. Also got the pod racing at the back at the Jedi Council. Still a couple of members short, I think. Your old puff has fallen over. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will get through and eventually restand all these figures up that have fallen over. But we've had, you know, some really really drastic changes of temperature from week to week here and obviously with they're all stood up with blue tack they do blue tack does tend to heat up and melt a little bit so they do end up falling over yeah we start to get into the beginning of attack of the clones Do need to add Zam Wessel speeder? Oh, there's always it's the beauty about the three and three quarter inch. There's always scenes to fill, there's always vehicles to add. I do need Elan Sleeves Bagano to go with Obi-Wan here at the bar. <laughs> He's a always a full eBay watch list. So we've got Anakin here about to take out some Tuscan Raiders. You know, not just the men, but the women and the children too. There's so much I could add. And will, eventually, you know. It's a, like I said, love about three and three quarter inches. You know, when they are a little bit sluggish with getting stuff out, there's, there's always so much to go back and add. So we've got my sort of big Geonosis battle. We've got Mason Obi-Wan. Geonosian has fallen down. But yeah, this is where I don't mind adding some of those 2000 Saga collection figures that are sort of pre-posed, like the Ayla. We've got Mace here, you know, facing away against the rig. Luminara. 
Stacey Ting there, Plo Koon, Kit Fisto, got a Count Dooku and a Sniper up there. Yeah, that's that's a really cool. I'm, I'm really happy with how this has sort of turned out. Again, there's definitely more characters and clones and stuff I'd love to add to the add to the scene there, but it's doing its job. We get into the Separatist Council there. Dooku versus Yoda, Anakin there, and Revenge of the Sith time. Two starfighters at the back. I eventually want to hang them up. So they're sort of along, flying along the back. That'll look awesome. And that would leave a little bit more room for some more figures on display down the bottom. So we have Palpatine's arrest. Or attempted arrest. It didn't really work out well, did it? Cody... We've got sort of paired up some of the Jedi with their masters, with their clone commanders. Ayla, Yoda, Kyadi Mundi's fallen over. Stasali. Still trying to track down the FX8, or FX6, sorry. Droid to go with the immolation scene. And a Kenobi one, and then, yeah. So yeah, there's Revenge of the Sith. Now we get down into Solo. Yeah, and there's been a few really solid figures in the uh, three and three quarter inch vintage collection line. Lando's a good one. Han could probably do with a with a little update and re-release. We'll see whether that happens. But yeah, some cool some cool characters in there for five POA. Same with Rogue One. It's starting to get a few more littered throughout. You know, Chirrut, we're still waiting on Baze. Cassian's getting an update. Bodhi needs an update. Saw Gerrera needs an update. Director Krennic, which has just recently been released, is good. That tank is definitely an underrated, underrated vehicle. And it sort of crosses off to the hallway. There's a few spots in there where I did have like the Kenobi figures, but it just didn't feel right. So I sort of, yeah, I don't know. This is it's a, it's a strange space here in the corner, but yeah, we sort of go into a new hope now. It's a Tatooine centric. I would love to replace that Jew back with the Power of the Force one. It just looks a little bit better than that one. But that was the uh, Episode One sort of movie heroes. One when that came out, the Cantina, which is something I'm very proud of, would love to see a new, new Cantina playset. I think that would be unbelievable. And these three definitely need an update, big time. So I'd argue even Obi Wan. Metal ceremony, some pilots, X Wing, that's Biggs as X Wing. Never got the Luke one. A couple of TIE pilots. Tarkin can do with an update. But it's a pretty nice nice full up shelf. I like I like a new hope, especially with the Cantina. It's just such a good moment. Now getting down to Empire Strikes Back. A little bit more congested around here, given that there's no sort of real big, you know, alien scene in Empire. We do sort of get a lot of Hoth generals and you know, Cloud City happening with the uh, carbon freeze playset here, which is cool. Got the bounty hunters down in front. Lando in Han's clothes, just just sort of hanging out in the corner there. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's a little bit of a 
a little bit of a claustrophobic little corner down here just to make room for the big play set but I didn't want to limit that because it's just it just looks so good see the uh, Saga Vader I'd love to get the Luke the old Luke to go with him just sort of hanging hanging off the edge or hang him from the dish and put him up on the bottom of the shelf somewhere here Return of the Jedi here this sort of you know mission brief before the Battle of Endor A custom Lando I did recently. A couple of figures here I could update, like the Han and Leia. Could just reuse those. Indoor bunker, really cool piece. A little great set. The rebels have been taken out there, <laughs> and you sort of get to the final duel. Return of the Jedi, and then we go up to the sail barge, the katana. And this is definitely sort of pretty much the centerpiece of my entire collection. You know, it's let's stand back a little bit more so we can get a better look at it. It is a magnificent piece. I'm really, really lucky to have one of these, to be honest. Very, very lucky to have the opportunity to pick one of these up when I did, when they were available back in 2017, I reckon it was. Well, that was when I got it. And the Desert Skiffs in the front. Would love the Sarlacc pit that came out in the, it was a legacy collection, I can't remember. But yeah, it's definitely missing a little Sarlacc in the center there. I'd love to Love to find a way to do one one day. Whip one up, 3D print one, I don't know. Let's just get a little bit of a closer look. What's going on here? So we've got the uh, sandstorm figures here. This little battery box actually. I've sort of weaved some little thin lights throughout the barge so when that lights up, all the interiors lit up a little bit. Yeah, there's an old squid head in there. The recent sort of four pack with the Vulcan Zeri and the other guys it wasn't available down here, so I haven't been able to get that. But yeah, I'd love to get those figures for for the skiffs. Do need to update Chewy. And that Java is just it's amazing. Yeah, just, just an amazing display. I love the way it's set up. I love the way I've set it up, to be honest. It's just, it's really cool. Have a bit of fun with it. Change it up every now and then. Underneath that, we've got the sort of the Rancor pit. Little torture chamber there. And I never got the, uh, the Jabba's Palace diorama set that came out last year. It's just at a... At a stage in my life where I wasn't able to afford to be able to put the deposit down and pre-order it. So unfortunately I've missed out on that. I know they're sort of online in the secondary market, but they've it's become quite expensive. So would love to eventually get a hold of that. Because, I mean, honestly, I've got the space for it. And I'd love to get the new Java, which I think is the same as the one in the barge there. Cause this one's cool, but he's a little bit out of date now. So I did manage to get that little that little set there, but to have the big thing for central in that in that shelf would would be amazing. I'd love to love to get a hold of that at some point. And down here we've sort of got the Mandos Mandoverse again, much like I did with Black Series, sort of all intermingled. Good. I still haven't updated uh, R5 for the new one. The speed of life back there is fantastic. 
Looking forward to some more characters from Ahsoka. The N1 is a beautiful piece, I love that thing. Some very, very cool stuff happening here and more to come too, which is fantastic. And then sort of coming down to the bottom here, we've got the sequel trilogy. Whether you love it or hate it, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I'm just here to share my collection. Um, yeah, there's a lot of figures in here. There are a lot of figures. Despite the fact that there were five POA, they did a great job of getting a lot of, a lot of characters out there. Uh, this guy's one of my favorites, like, he's cool, man, like, him and, you know, Sid and Nathano there, they did a, what's the face? And then, yeah, Rise of Skywalker at the end there, like, like the Black Series, definitely underserved. Not many figures came out for that film, um... Yeah, definitely underserved. I wouldn't have even been mad if they'd put out a five POA line for a Rise of Skywalker, to be honest, just to just to mix it up with what they did for the other two films, and then start scattering out some um, some vintage collection stuff, just to just to start adding to it. You know, there's a couple of vintage figures there, the Sith Troopers, that Kylo Ren's a custom. We had Luke, that Ray. Phasma. We did start getting some cool figures in the vintage collection. And I hope, I do hope they, they do continue to scatter some sequel trilogy characters. So I do think that the uh, the toys are a quintessential part of, you know, falling in love with the characters even more so. I just think childhood, growing up with Power of the Force and you know, when you're not sitting there watching the films, you're playing with the toys and making up your own stories. But yeah, the Poe's X-Wing there, that's, a, that's an awesome piece there. I love that. Just want to share it underneath the end. No, uh, only other person I know that's got one of these is uh, Sci-Fi, <laughs> the Happer Boar. He's a big, he's a big plush thing. I don't know where to put him so he gets stuffed under there. And then sort of around the corner here, you know, accessory boxes. This is pretty much how I store all my bits and pieces. Weapons and lightsabers, and yeah, pretty much the same for the three and three quarter. There's a big box of card backs, big box of other accessories and, and stuff in there. So we just whiz my way back up, and that's pretty much it, folks. That is that is the room. That is the room for this period of time, it is February 2024. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me here in the room tonight, and today, whenever you're watching. Yeah, it's been a blast to be able to finally put this video together and show everyone, share it with you all. It's been, it's been awesome. Like I love, love what I've been able to do in this room over the last sort of six months, um, and what I'm gonna be able to continue to do um, with my series that I do on the uh, on the YouTube channel. Um, this will be in a playlist with that, so we're definitely doing some updates as I go along. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Give the video a thumbs up if you did. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I appreciate you all joining on and hanging out. And uh, we'll see you again for some more videos very, very soon. So until then, may the force be with you always. Thank you.